In this lesson, we will learn how to find the sums of infinite geometric series. And yes, you heard me correct. We can find the sum of an infinite geometric series. But this is only going to happen under certain circumstances. Now, for example, let's say we had 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, and you keep going forever and ever. Okay, well, if you want to add the sum of just the first term, s sub 1, well, we just have the first term being added, which would just be the 1. If we have s sub 2, we're adding the first two terms, so 1 plus the 1 half, which gives me 1.5. s sub 3 would equal 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth. You're adding the first three terms. If you add the first four terms, you get 1.875. Add the first 10 terms, you keep going to add the first 10, you would get 1.998. Now each time, notice how we're getting closer and closer to a particular number. And notice that each time that we're adding, these numbers out here get increasingly small. And eventually, if you keep going on towards infinity, then you're essentially going to be adding zero because the number is so small. So even though we're adding an infinite amount of numbers, because the numbers are going to be so small by the end, we can actually get an actual solution if the conditions are correct with the series that is given to us. And the condition is essentially the fact that the numbers are going to have to keep getting smaller and smaller that we're adding together. Because in this next example, we see that the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger. So if you add the first term together, so find S1, we would have 1. If you add the first two terms together, we have 1 plus 2, which is 3. Add the first three terms, we get 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is 7. First four terms, we give you 15. The first five terms, 31. And notice, if you keep going on for infinity, these numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and would equal infinity. So the numbers need to keep getting smaller in order to find the sum of an infinite series. And to be more technical, if you have a series such as this, we say the common ratio needs to have an absolute value that is less than 1. Because if the absolute value is bigger than 1, then the numbers keep getting bigger, right? Because the common ratio is what you're multiplying by each time. If the common ratio were something like a 2, we'd have 1 times 2, so the next number would be 2, next number is 4, next number is 8, etc. So if the number is bigger than 1, the common ratio is bigger than 1, these numbers keep getting bigger. But if you started with the number 1, and the common ratio were something like 1 half, as you see in this case, then 1 times 1 half gives you the next term of 1 half. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. 1 half of 1 fourth is 1 eighth. And the numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, we see the condition that must be true in order for this to work. But the question now is, how can we find the sum of an infinite series? Well, if you look at the formula that we have for a finite series, if you were to then zone in on this part right here, 1 minus r to the n power. So looking just at that part, and looking at the fact that an infinite series would have an infinite number of terms. So n is the number of terms, right? So if you plug in something large in for n, let's put in 1,000, for example. If you plug in 1,000 in for n, we would have 1 minus 1 half to the thousandth power. Well, 1 half to the thousandth power would be some super small number, which would be basically 0. So what we have is 1 minus 0, or just 1. So what we have with an infinite series, because as n gets large, this in the red box gets close to 1, our formula then becomes t1 times 1 over 1 minus r, or simply t1 over 1 minus r. So this here is the formula for an infinite geometric series. And so plugging in the numbers into the formula, t1 is the term 1, which is number 1 in this case. t1 is 1, 
and then r is the common ratio, and the ratio is what you're multiplying by to get to the next term. You're multiplying by one half each time, so your common ratio is one half. Plug those in, we have one over one minus one half. One minus one half would be one half, so one divided by one half would give me one times two over one, which would just be two. So notice the sum of this infinite series you keep adding up forever and ever and ever would equal an actual number, and that number is two. And if you look back at the previous slide, we saw that when you kept adding more and more terms together, we kept getting closer and closer to two. And with this formula, we can get to that answer without having to add multiple times. Here's another example where you're told to find the sum of eight minus four plus two minus one, etc. Now this would be an infinite series because we have the three dots at the end. And to find the sum of this infinite series, we're gonna use this formula. Now just make sure that your common ratio is between one and negative one. Because if not, then the numbers keep getting too big and we cannot have an actual solution. So T1 is the first term, so T1 would be eight. And your common ratio, which is what we're concerned about, is found by taking a number, so let's say the negative one, and divide it by the one before that. So negative one divided by two. So the common ratio is negative one half, which does fall between one and negative one. So this common ratio is okay. We can have an actual solution for this series. So we plug in the numbers. T1 is eight, R is negative one half. So for the denominator, one minus negative one half would be one plus one half, which would be one and one half or three halves. So we have eight divided by three over two, which is the same thing as multiplying by two over three. So now we have eight times two thirds, which gives me 16 thirds or 5.3. Here's one last example. You have eight plus 12 plus 18 plus 27, etc. And this is an infinite series because it keeps going on forever and ever and you're told to find the sum of this series. Well, T1 is the first term, so T1 would be eight. Common ratio, we find by taking a term and dividing it by the number before it. So 12 divided by eight would reduce, divide top and bottom by four, we get three over two. Now notice, the common ratio is three halves, which is bigger than one, because three halves is one and one half. Because it is bigger than one, then that means the sum would be infinity. And you can look at the series and see that the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you keep adding forever, then this sum would not have a solution because it would approach infinity. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.